Hello everyone. So what we're going to do today is learn how to write our first quantum hello world program uh, using QSharp. Now what is QSharp? QSharp is a high level programming language created by Microsoft, especially for quantum programming. Uh, usually when we do quantum computing, we think about it in the terms of quantum gates. But what QSharp does is it offers a certain level of abstraction. So we don't have to think about quantum computing in the terms of gates, but we can still think about quantum computing in, in the terms of algorithms itself, uh, just like we would do with any other language. So it makes the transition to um, quantum computing very accessible for uh, developers, right? So what we have to do first is have our VS code installed, as you can see on my screen. Uh, the installation link for VS Code will be given in the description of this video if you don't already have it installed. Then what we do is come down here and we click on extensions. The extension you would need is something known as the QDK or the Azure Quantum Development Kit, right? So once you have installed that, you come out here and say new file. You see the file called hello world.qs, your first QSharp file. Then what I do is give it a namespace. A namespace is simply for file management, library management, and things like that. So our namespace hello world. And then what I do is give it an entry point. So the best way to think about entry point is uh, it works like a main function in other uh, programming languages, right? So what the main function in other programming languages uh, does is that it tells the compiler, this is where you have to enter into the program. And that's exactly what the entry point uh, function is. So then what I do is operation. Okay, what operations are is uh, just what we call functions in other languages. We call them operations in QSharp, right? So operation, hello world, right? And then unit. Unit means that I don't expect to return anything from this function. Then let me go message and say, hello world, I am quantum. Let me close this with a semicolon and run it. So I'll have to bring my debug console out. And as you can see here, we have our message out. Hello world, I am quantum. So if you have got here so far, that's amazing. You have written your first Q sharp hello world program. Uh, but let's actually do a bit of, uh, let's say, play around with a qubit, right? So that's what quantum computing is about. So what bits are to classical computing? Qubits are to quantum computing. So how to do that? So let me do this first. And let's say, uh, how do I initialize a qubit? By using the use keyword, use qubit is equal to qubit, right? And then what I do is, um, so the qubit is initially initialized to the zero state and we have to put this into superposition, right? Uh, I need this qubit to get random before I measure it. So what I do is I give it something known as the Hadamard transformation that puts my qubit into uh, superposition. And then what I do is I measure the qubit. So let result is equal to I measure my qubit, right? And then what I do is I, now before I close this function and return the result, I have to reset the qubit to the initial state so it can be released. So that's a very simple function, reset qubit, right? And then I say return result. But now what I have to do is go and change the return type to something known as result, right? So now let me run this program. So you can see the result of our measurement was zero. So this is one of the few uh, states, right? Zero or one state. So in our first shot, we got the zero state. Let's try it a couple of more times. Okay, we already got one and one again and one again and then zero. So what's happening is um, every time this function starts, we are initializing a qubit using the Hadamard uh, transformation and putting this qubit into superposition. So uh, between the sta uh, states of zero and one. Then what happens when I measure this qubit, it collapses into one of two states, zero or one. Then I store that value in the result. Then what I do is I reset this qubit and before releasing it, then I simply return the result. So this, if you have gotten this far, congratulations, you have written your first QSharp program with a qubit. So that's amazing, keep going and keep talking. Thank you for watching.